Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you 13 Feb. Wednesday. RBNZ last night, as you all know and can see, hawkish. That was a shocker. Uh, obviously, I didn't trade it. Uh, I was asleep in the nest. But, uh, holy cow. I think that caught some of our uh, North American colleagues uh, a little bit stunned. But, uh, never mind. We move forward. We, we're not going to be fading this or buying the dip. We don't really understand why they were so hawkish. Um, I saw some, uh, I received some emails about some commentary on this decision and how uh, this might be regretted. Anyway, Kiwi, up 1.6%. I like those apples. I want to talk about stocks today. Uh, here we are. Uh, cue the music. We're in this 50 handle corridor now. Very, very important um, as far as I'm concerned. As you can see, uh, we crossed the 200 day, so I'm not throwing my cell shoes on immediately, uh, but I have got them out of the cupboard and I will be putting them on in the next day or so. We think this, uh, this area between 2750 and 2815, I've talked about it a fair bit. Um, we're in one of these situations where this guy is getting very stretched. Um, not quite above 75 on our proprietary uh, system, overbought, but getting close to 80. We normally um, get worried at 80. Obviously, at 90, you saw Euro, Euro dollar was. The opposite side of that it was at 10 yesterday. Uh, so when you get to these extremes, we get we take notice. Uh, so I think today I'm going to be sort of I'm going to start the sales at maybe 72, uh, with room to sell up at 92. And this is your bear market uh, trade. If you think this is a bear market and we're going to revert to negativity. This is your entry point in the next 24 to 48 hours. So, put your big boy boots on and uh, let's take a close look at S&P futures uh, going into today. What else we got? Euro, man, we nailed that fucker yesterday. 112.62, we saw Citibank paying through the offer. And... You know, we talked about it on Twitter, and, and we did take a small, long position, but then we got out of it at 98. Now we're square, kicking ourselves a little bit. Uh, that's pretty close to bullish engulfing on Euro. We know the market's short Euro. And you're basically just in this range, right? You're basically 115, 112 and a half. So this is not a great place to enter into longs, 113.38. Um, you're kind of in no man's land, but if boons have turned, you see boons are at 165.92, um, and if BTPs continue to go up, so your boon BTP spread continues to contract, uh, we do see possibility for this euro to, uh, to edge higher. Which brings us to dollar Swiss. Uh, banging on the drum yesterday out of New York, or out of Chicago, should I say, um, to sell this guy. I'm not super uh, convinced on Dollar Swiss. This is a weird animal, this guy. Um, Euro Swiss could easily float higher and take this higher. This is our now fourth or fifth day closing above parity. We talked about this the last couple of days. I won't, I won't belabor it. This looks pretty solid to me, Dollar Swiss. Uh, I'm not a seller, even though it is overbought. I'm also not a buyer. Uh, I'm just kind of lurking in the bushes to see see what's coming up. Cross yen, across the board is higher. This is your interesting point now in Euro yen. We luckily pulled our offers yesterday as we saw stocks building into a bid type price action. There will be stops above 126. Uh, 
uh, although it doesn't make any sense with Europe, you know, in a shambles. As long as we're in this sort of like euf euphoria, nothing is wrong, equities higher, uh, euro yen will continue to squeeze, there will be risk above 125.95 figure. Again, here at 43, I don't really know what to do. Um, so we're just going to keep quiet, Euro Yen. And as soon as we get a feel that this is going to trade, uh, we may get long, ride the wave of those stops higher. Uh, but right now we're just watching. Aussie looks like a buy on dip today. 08 was, uh, was the break point. As you saw, we got long Aussie Yen yesterday uh, in the most unlikely winning trade ever. Uh, Aussie Yen did pay. Um, we saw huge, huge supply uh, in that 35, 36, 37 area. And yet, here we are, the Kiwis saved this guy. So, we're jubilant and feeling pretty lucky on that one because it was a crappy level. There was way more sellers than buyers uh, for at least three or four hours. And, uh, and yet, never got below 30 and so here we are um, we're out of this thing now and we're just moving on I don't know what's going on as the end it's a pig really so just happy to uh, to have that but bringing me back to Aussie this looks like a buy on dip this 08 level was pretty important so you saw we have these three tops here we went up to 25 back down to 08 now we're at 30 I'm going to be buying Aussie in the low 20s uh, and then again at 12 today. Um, Aussie looks like it's going to just crawl higher. Not too much logic to this, but um, just following Kiwi and following this risk on fantasy. Uh, Aussie looks like it's going to climb higher. So that's my main focus this morning. We do have some data out. UK CPI, which is important, and we have Euro industrial production and a German 30 year bond auction. Uh, in the afternoon session, we've got US CPI and then we have the RBNZ. Oh, we've got Governor Orr speaking today, 8 p.m. Swiss time. Uh, imagine if he calms this thing down and doves it out a bit. Let's be very, very careful with that speech, 8 p.m. Swiss time. So these are all things to keep in mind. The main focus is Aussie today. Uh, we'll be playing on the long side, and we'll just watch to see how the rest of this market develops. You'll catch us on Twitter. Make some dough, people. Talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.